In the newly reformed criminal justice system, the jury has been removed from the courtroom. Due to a spike in criminal activity, trials last no more than three days, and the burden of proof has been placed on the defense. Defendants rarely go free, and many prosecutors are only interested in maintaining a perfect guilty record. But some men and women still seek the truth. These are their stories.
but she wasn't there, so I left. Was she expecting you? <laughs> well... You were dumped. Again. Hey! She didn't dump me! She was just taking a break from me. In Paris. Things get ugly in there, right? Your friend, he clearly has motive for murder. And I hear the prosecution has a key witness. But as long as you believe in your client, everything will be okay. Are you ready, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, Mia. I, I mean, uh, Chief. Just try to see focus, okay? <laughs> Court is now in session for State vs. Box. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. And I am ready. <clears throat> Sorry, Th that is, uh, the defense is also ready, sir. <clears throat> your, your Honor, oh. sir. This is your first case, Mr. Uh, Phoenix, right? For your client's sake, I do hope that you can control your nerves. <clears throat> yes. It's a serious job. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, for my opening statement, allow me to summarize the. <clears throat> Sorry. That, that is, summarize these baseless charges. What? Uh, <clears throat> charges. Our defendant, Mia Fey, th that is, uh, Larry Butts' only crime was to be in the wrong place at the right time. Uh, wait, wait, did I do that right? That's, uh... Get your act together. Prince freedom depends on you. Okay. <clears throat> All right. It says right here in our court records autopsy report that our unfortunate victim, Miss Cinder Block... <clears throat> Sorry. Miss Cindy Stone was killed by blunt force trauma to the head at approximately 4 p.m. And the murder weapon? Please enlighten us, prosecute back. Of course, Your Honor. The prosecution would like to add to the court record this, this statue of the thinker. It was found next to the body at the scene of the crime. And now the prosecution would like to call a witness who also saw the body at the scene of the crime. Mr. Frank saw it. <laughs> Mr. Saw it, you were selling papers to our door. Tell us a little bit about what you saw. Yes, on the day of the Moya, I saw that man <laughs> fleeing the apartment. Of course, I thought that suspicious, so I checked inside, and there I saw a woman lying on the floor, dead. <laughs> I tried to call the police, but her phone wasn't working. I had to go to the local park to make the call. Incidentally, there was a blackout at the time of the murder, so the cordless phone was out. Mr. Wright, it's time for your cross-examination. Uh, but, 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 Chief, what can I do against eyewitness testimony? Well, look at your court record, right? You've got the evidence right here. There it is. You got a fine contradiction. You raise an objection. All right, I got it. I'm, I'm sorry. What, what do I do? If your client's innocent, this testimony's fiction. So check your court record for the contradiction. It's time to take control. The story's clearly phony. Present something to poke a hole in the testimony. I see. The witness is clearly lying. and saw that the woman was dead, but how did you know? She may have just been unconscious. Well, she was lying completely still on the floor, and there was blood everywhere. Blood everywhere? It's obvious she was gone. I was too afraid to move. I couldn't even go inside. I was completely frozen in fear. He didn't go inside? That's probably the fastest contradiction I've ever heard. Well, then you've got to point it out, right? What you need to achieve is to grab the court's attention In order to make them believe, you must create some tension How dare the witness tell a lie while being on the stand Throw in the eye and bang your desk loudly with your hand You say you didn't go inside. How did you know the phone wasn't working? Yeah. Uh, well, you see, there was a, there was a phone on the shelf 
uh, just inside the doorway. I never went inside. I didn't go any further than the doorway. You're getting closer, right? Don't let him slither between your fingers. Like I said, I found it then at one o'clock, found out the phone wasn't working, and went to the bar to call. You see, you found her did it. One? You got it, right? What do you understand? It's just only clearly condemned your client. Come on, give me the chair!
I have, Your Honor. The validity of Frank Sowick's testimony has been called into serious doubt through cross-examination, as well as the legality of his presence in Miss Stone's apartment. However, as the prosecution has mentioned, without further evidence, the defense cannot indict the witness. That's right, Ruby. You don't even have a leg to stand on. I'm not finished. Okay. The defense <laughs> is prepared to prove, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that the clock was indeed slow on the day of the murder. <laughs> and we will use the defendant's own words to do so. Tough words. Let's see you pull this one off. This is my proof. My client had mentioned this morning that the victim was not returning his phone calls and had just left the country, only to return from abroad the day before the crime. Now, this court, this, the court record shows that this passport was found on the body and clearly showed that she had just returned from Paris, France. Clearly, Miss Stone took the clock with her, meaning that on the day of the murder, the clock was not three hours behind, but nine hours fast, the same time difference between here and Paris. That's why, Mr. Solid, you heard the wrong time when you struck her dead in her own apartment. Objection! Mr. Mr. Solid, you walked into the apartment thinking the witness was on vacation, and then when she walked in on your dirty work, you silenced her. Later on, <laughs> You fabricated an alibi and set up Mr. Larry Butts to take the fall. Are you lawyers with your objections and your contradictions? Just who do you think you are? All right, yes, I admit it. I was there in the apartment. When she came back, she just wouldn't stop screaming, and so I... I... You hit Cindy Stone with the thinker. Yes, I did it. I hit her. Bailey, you take this witness for questioning. The charge will stand trial at a later date, but in the light of his confession, <laughs> the court must find Mr. Larry Butts not guilty. This court is adjourned. In your top off, prosecutor. <laughs> we did it. Thanks, Chief. You really bailed me out there. Congratulations, you did wonderfully today. Y yeah, but if it weren't for your help, I don't no, think I... No, not at all. You fought your own battles. Oh, gee, Nick. Oh, it's great to have friends, isn't it? <laughs> uh, congratulations on your verdict, Mr. Butts. Oh, thanks. Here, take this as a token of my appreciation. But isn't that the, the murder weapon? No, 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 no. We had two of them, see? His and hers, you know? Oh, well then, I'm pleased to accept. Thank you. Of course. Nick, thanks a lot, man. I own the one, really. It's no problem, but uh, Larry, about your fee. Yes, yeah. thanks a bunch for doing this no bono. Oh, Larry, I can't. It's pro, pro bono. Yeah, when, when something smells. That's Larry for you. But I've owed him this favor ever since we were kids. Hmm. Right. I've got some business to take care of this evening. But afterwards, would you like to join me for dinner? My sister Maya's coming into town, too. We can turn it into your victory celebration. Really? Absolutely, she deserves it. Why don't you swing by the office around 9 o'clock? Uh, sure. I'll see you then. Uh, but... It's over. I won. I actually won. I won it. I still can't believe it. In this field, it's tough to excel. But if I have faith, I'll achieve it. If I just trust my clientele, challenge everything contradictory, I realize what knowledge is worth. I know it, the sweet taste of victory. I know this trial is my rebirth. Here I am, the court and trial behind me. Here I stand, ready to face a new day. And with each passing hour, I'm alive, I'm empowered, I feel that nothing will stand in my way. Here I go, ready to tackle the next case, and who knows if this is all just a dream. But if so, let me sleep, or I'll count star hunting sheep to prevent a rude awakening. Here I am. When my fears were verified, I felt frankly terrified that this role was not to be. But Chief helped me to rebound, and I turned the case around. I owe her this victory. Be a face 
the one who helped me through this battle. This victory is shared between us, it's true. And as long as she's there, she'll assuage my despair and help me through. Me and Chief, a team about to turn over a new leaf, and we will gladly stand tall. And with her by my side as my permanent guide, I feel pride and I know I won't fall. Now maybe I'm a lawyer after all. Here I am, Chief. You ready to get some dinner? Who, who's there? What happened? She's dying. Help her. Uh, I, I don't know what you're doing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Everyone freeze. You're both suspects of murder. Uh, who are you? Homicide Detective Dick Dumps, you pal. We're investigating a little tip we got from the hotel across the street. You're both suspects of murder. Nobody in the This name means something out for you? It's, it's my... It's oh, my name. Of course. It's all coming together now. A message in blood, written with the victim's last ounce of strength. All right, Maya. You and I gotta dig down. down. No! No, I didn't, I didn't do it! I didn't, help me! Help me! Child, it just simply won't do. But Mr. Grossberg, Mia said. Your little sister said many things, child. In fact, she said quite a bit too much. And that's precisely why I cannot help you. My, my hands are tied. I, 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 I do hope you can understand. Mr. Grossberg, wait. Mr. Arthur, one, one guess at a time. Uh, sir, I need to It's all right. I'll just leave it. Now, pardon me, little boy. It was my last chance. Well, he didn't seem so great anyway. Kind of uh, worn out, you know? Who? Uh, we, we met in Mia's office briefly. Oh, you're that lawyer, uh, Mia's partner, Phoenix, right? That's right, I'm Phoenix Wright. <clears throat> uh, anyway, uh, I think you might have dropped this uh, when that strange detective carried you away. Oh, thank you. They're never going to believe me, are they? Mr. Grossberg told me the prosecutor on this case is a genius. Joined the prosecutor's office at only 20, and he hasn't lost a case since. They even call him the demon prosecutor. Miles Edgeworth is prosecuting this case? Do you know him? Um, I, I used to. Anyway, Maya, about last night, Mia, she said you were in town to see her? Yes, I live up in the mountains for training. But she called yesterday and asked me to hold some evidence for her, since I live so far out of town. It isn't too far by train, so... Uh, wait, wait, her... training? Oh. What kind of training? Uh, for spirit channeling. I'm an acolyte. A medium in training. These clothes aren't just a fashion statement, you know? A spirit medium? Uh, was Mia into that sort of thing, too? Well, all the Fey women have a strong connection to the spirit world. Her powers were first class, too, but she left the mountain to study law. Well... She was a first-class lawyer, too. Maya, I can't claim to understand what you're going through, but I miss her, too. Mia, she always knew what, what to do. do. I've heard a lot about you, you know? She'd always talk about her junior partner when we spoke on the phone. All the embarrassing stuff, right? <laughs> well, usually she had nothing but good to say. 
I think we even talked about you yesterday when she called to ask me to hold that evidence. Let me check my phone log. Hey, sis, what's shaking? And I've still got a very bad feeling about this. Would you mind holding on to some evidence for me? I need you to take it to a lawyer I trust if anything happens. I've stuffed all the documents inside of a clock that's shaped like the thinker. The thinker? Like the famous statue? How does it work? Well, right now it doesn't. I've taken out all the clockwork to make room for the evidence. But enough of this business. My junior partner survived his first trial today. I invited him for this for dinner. He deserves at least a dinner after suffering under you as his mentor. How did he do, anyway?
Court is now in session, of course, state, be fair. <clears throat> the defense is ready, the Your Honor. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. This is an open and shut case. The defendant, Maya Fay, murdered her sister in cold blood, and there's evidence and an eyewitness to corroborate this. There can be no room for doubt. The prosecution would now like to call its first witness, the detective who first arrived on the scene. Witness, state your name and occupation. Yes, sir. Homicide Detective Dick Gumshoe. If you could indulge us in the details of the incident. Absolutely, sir. So, uh, uh you know, Miss Fay was found uh, dead in her office on the floor, uh, dead from a uh, single blow to the head, blood force trauma. Uh, the weapon was uh, the clinker. The thinker detective. Uh, right, right, sorry. <laughs> anyway, uh, I got, we rushed down there as soon as we got the call from the Gatewater Hotel, and we found two people at the scene. Maya Fay and her defense attorney, Perry Butts. Uh, my name is not- I immediately arrested <laughs> Maya Fay because of the evidence we found at the scene. A receipt with her name written on it in blood. The victim's blood. Uh, but, Detective, just because you found it next to the body doesn't mean that she wrote it. <coughs> yeah, so who did, pal? Well, it could have been me. <laughs> you did it? Well, I, I, I'm just saying, <clears throat> can you prove it wasn't me? So, Mr. Rutherford, you take that as a confession. Uh, no, but, uh, This is court of law, Mr. Wright, not a playground. Try to think twice before making thoughtless statements. All right, uh, Detective, what proof was there that the blood is the victim's? Oh, yeah, well, uh, you know, they, uh, examined the blood and looked for the hemoglobin, uh, the hemoglobetrotters. Detective! And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the blood of the victim's fine, but, Detective, how common is it for the victim to write the name of their killer? Huh, well, uh, it, it's in the movies and TV shows all the time. But this opinion on this matter is irrelevant. What does matter is that the victim wrote the name of her killer before her death. The way I see it, she's the only one who couldn't have written it. Look at our court records autopsy report. It plainly states that the victim died immediately by blood force trauma to the head. Mr. Rice, when did you get that autopsy report? Yesterday. Why? That report is outdated. A second autopsy was conducted at my request, which shows that a single blow to the head did indeed spell the end of the victim almost immediately. She could have lived for several more minutes, which means it's entirely possible that she wrote the name of her killer. Thank you, Detective. That is all. <laughs> Edward, I heard rumors about you, you know, the demon prosecutor. They say there's nothing you won't do to get a guilty verdict. What reason could you have had for a second autopsy at all? Mr. Wright, please refrain from personal attacks on the prosecution. Yeah, that's right, pal. No matter, uh, the evidence is irrefutable. I'd like this added to the official record. Understood. The court accepts this as evidence. And just to further disprove your erroneous claims, right? The prosecution would now like to call its next witness. We call to the stand Ms. April May.
Uh, excuse me, ma'am. I'm here to see Marvin Grossberg, uh, Ace Attorney. You're gonna have to wait. He's in a mirror. Uh, but, ma'am, surely you must have noticed this. Take that! <laughs> uh, but can I just please speak to him as soon as possible? You can go wait outside his office. Should be finishing up shortly. Thank you. And precisely how much is this here work of art in your cost? Oh, that's three million dollars, but I, I could never part with it. Oh, splendiferous. I'll take it. No, 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 it's not for sale. Oh, nonsense, Grodyberg. Everything has a price. You know I'm good for it. Well, I'll see you soon. Come on. Down. Please put it down. Don't touch me! <laughs> See you at the same time next week. This is fun. Oh, come on, come on. Oh, hello! I'm in need of a new secretariat. My last one was arrested for wiretapping. You want a job at Blue Coal? I'll be right! Um, Mr. Grossberg. <coughs> Mr. Grossberg, who was that guy? What just happened? That was Red White, CEO of Blue Corn. He was uh, purchasing that painting from me. That didn't sound like a regular purchase. Well, that was very special to me. Uh, a special piece of my past, you might say. Uh, Mr. Grossberg, I'm actually glad you brought that up. You see, your refusing to defend me as younger sister leads me to believe that you know things that are vital to this case. If you don't mind, could you tell me a little bit about your past? Did you say my past? Uh, yes, but, but sir, are you? Like the sand of fragile amorous, the days of my It's been 15 years. Don't you think it's time to break free of this? I can help. 
I just need your cooperation. This, this has been weighing me down for 15 years, but I suppose the back you are. Here, I, I found this, I, I procured this when they cleared out Mia's belongings at the Bay Co. offices. She never forgave Brad for what happened to her. She must have fallen into years. She's like I wasn't his only victim. Take that! <laughs> <laughs> Suicide for boy, hundreds of them. Policemen, politicians, lawyers, just about anybody. And as I'm sure you can probably tell, there's one common denominator. Red, white. Careful. Red, white holds the entire country in the palm of his hand. But he must be connected to this somehow. That was his secretary up on the stand today, and I would not be shocked to find out that he was the man staying in the room with him. Good luck. Thank you, Mr. Grossberg. I think you just gave me just what I needed. Oh, welcome to my art gallery, and this, well, this is my prize part of the collection, the European Surprisingly movable statue. <laughs> <laughs> it is my soup du jour of the day, one might say. The what? <laughs> oh, I pardon what my compatriarch. As you may or may not have noticed by now, I have been blessified with a rather giantesque vocabulary. Right, yeah, th that's nice, but. Would you mind if I started asking you those questions now? Now, have I shown you everything? These participation trophies I got in school. Yes, yes, you've shown me everything. Twice, including your new secretary. Uh, why did you need a new secretary? Well, my last secretary I was arrested for wiretapping, and I very well couldn't keep her on after that. She was a naughty, naughty girl! <laughs> I have some questions for you, Mr. Lawyer. Uh, no, I'm the one asking the questions here. <laughs> Let me guess. You're a lawyer, fresh out of law school. Uh, yes, but how did you know that? Well, that's the only explanation as to why you'd say something like that. Let me tell you something, kid. Red White calls the shots. What Red says goes. There ain't no right way, but the white way. Well, it's pretty ironic that the white way has a lot to do with blackmailing. Oh. Oh. <laughs> you are an almond delight. Oh, you don't understand, kid. Red white makes the rules. Red white rules the dice. Red white has the personage that makes everyone look twice. Red white draws the lines. Red white deals the cards. People stop me everywhere to be trust me. There he goes. Hello, Wilmington. But red's a decent man with old-fashioned ideals. Red will answer one question, cause that's just how nice he feels. All right. So if Blue Court isn't for blackmail, what exactly do you do? Oh. Blue Corp, my favor of love, my pride and prejudice. Oh, it's so great. Blue Corp deals in information we buy and sell it to. You may not know, but Blue Corp is named for the color blue. I thought about myself. <laughs> Red White gets the best. Red White follows through. Ask not what you can do for Red, but what Red can do for you. And what can I do for you, Monsignor? I'll count that last one as a practice. Come now, here's your only shot. All right, I have just one question. Who'd you take that statue from? Take! How dare you choose to find me or something like that? This is a Paris original, straight from Canada. Speaking of, I'll think I've never even been to Canada. It's not a far hike. Just go over here, you can't miss it. Oh, that mountain with the presidents on it, and the tower that links the sky in a stout vacation. Who did you take it from? Senator Patrick MacArthur, perhaps? I'm the titleless person. The politician who killed himself. I, hmm, let me think about it. I think 
week, I know his name. He was caught embezzling government funds. <laughs> that really is a shame. And then, one day the press got wind of it. Are you quite finished now? The day after, he killed himself. And this concerns me how he of light, but it stops right here. No more will you paralyze with fear. You have some pretty magnificent claims there, Mr. <laughs> Wrong, was it? <laughs> now, how does this all connect with me? Come now, make me laugh. It's quite all right to identify me, Captain, with my... Mia Day found the connection. In this file, a list of suicides all marked with the name White. Well, why are you spending all this time investigating me? Shouldn't you be looking for the murderer of your dear Miss Faye? And just what do you think I'm doing, Mr. White? Huh! <laughs> You must have talked to Grody Berg. I guess he had to speak. Ask him why I have this painting. I'll tell you why. He's weak. It's gross, but only the strong survive kid. And Red White's the alpha male. Red White's king of the jungle. Gross fits. He's a whale. So don't you come here trying to knock me off my throne. Let he who is with sin and loves it cast the final stone. Connect me to the prosperous office, please. And then call the security. I have a raving madman on my hands. Yes, Mr. White. <sighs> oh, thank you. Why do you. What do you want? This isn't a great time. I have decided I want to testify in tomorrow's trial. It seems the murderer is right here all along. But I thought you didn't want to have any part Quietude! I told you I'd change my mind now, didn't I? And I don't believe your name exists to question me. You did it. Yeah, Mr. Lawyer. What are you going to do? <laughs> I control the police. I control the judge. I control the prosecution. I am the law! <laughs> You're nothing but a mere lawyer! Red White breaks the rules. Red White loads the dice. Red White has the power! So take Red White's advice. Red White stacks the deck. Red White's always ahead! That's not what Red can do for you, but what you can do for Red!
Secretary convened for the case of State versus Fay. Well, uh, State versus Wright, that's now it seems. I will now hear the opening statement from both the defense and prosecution. Uh, Mr. Wright, where's your defense attorney? I've elected to defend myself, Your Honor. <laughs> Very well, your opening statement, please. <clears throat> I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Adworth, your opening statement, please. Decisive evidence. A decisive witness. This case is about as cut and dry as they come. Very well. You may call your witness. We call Mr. Red White to the stand. <laughs> <laughs> please state your name and occupation. Red White, CEO of Blue Corp. Oh, Mr. Judge. It's so good to see you again. Are we still on for next week? Yes, sir. <laughs> if you would, Mr. White, please give your account on the <laughs> night of the murder. I understand that you are staying at the Gatewater Hotel with Miss April and May. Why, yes. I shall regale you with the utmost gratitude. Oh, let's see. I was beside the window perusifying my latest children's book, Red White's Bizarre Adventure, Part 4. Diamonds are actually fairly breakable if you think about it. And then I heard something and glanced outside the window, where I saw you with the flaccid hair, and you were making such a ruckus. It was I across the street, through the window I saw this, and then I called Miss, uh, what was her name again? Ah, Miss April May. She saw you and nearly fainted in distress. We both clearly saw you. What made you look outside the window? Why, the cacophonary sounds of the shattering glass light stand. It seems you not poor Miss Mia into it during your pursuit. Wait. Can't be right. What? Look at the floor plan. He couldn't have seen the light stand from the hotel room. It would have been behind the wall. Mr. Wright, if you have secrets, I hope you've got enough to share with the board. <laughs> yes, Your Honor. It's just the defense does have an objection. Look at the floor plans. The glass light stand would not be visible from the Gatewater Hotel. <laughs> In other words, the only way you would have known where the glass light stand was is if you were standing in the Fay and Co. law offices. This is no time for jokes, right? The only people who could have identified that light stand were the victim and the killer. <laughs> Mr. Wright, just what are you suggesting? Oh, don't get mad at the boy. He's just a little rat scoundrel grasping at straws. Now, you, how about a recess? No, a killer? Mr. White. We need to hear the whole story, straight from you. <clears throat> Very well. Mr. Your Honor. Actually, what is your name? Uh, anyways, <laughs> <laughs> stop at all. Please do. Thank you. <clears throat> Let's see, sitting by the window, reading a book, and I looked outside when I heard the thingy. Yes, that's right. I heard that, you know, glass Lighty thingy. The glass light stand? Yes! I saw it when you pour not pour Miss Mia into it during your pursuit. Objection! Um, how about that recess? No. My stomach hurts. Not a chance, Mr. White. There's no way you could have known this was a glass light stand just by seeing the broken shards. Mr. White? I uh, think it's about time to confess. It, it was. Uh, it was uh, objection! Stop right there, Mr. White. Okay. I agree with Wright. I believe it is about time you confess. Really? Th that's pretty honest. Too or wiretapping. What? what? Yeah. Allow me to explain. Mr. White's firm deals in information. We buy it too. Too. <laughs> no. He instructed Miss May to wiretap the Fay and Co. offices. But who actually installed the tap? Was it not you, Mr. White? You would have had plenty of time to identify the nightstand, thus mm -hmm. revealing Mr. Wright's theory. As the baseless conjecture it truly is, isn't that right? Oh, uh, well, I mean, that is to say, yes! <laughs> yes, I remember now. I was there about a week before Miss
miss me as tragic Harry's demise. Mr. Wright, do you have anything to add? Um, thank you, dear. How, how about that recess? I think not. The time has come for you to admit defeat. Mr. Wright. Mr. Wright, are you giving up? Yes, Your Honor. No! There's nothing else I can do. I commend you on your defense. You fought honorably. It's over. Honestly, Phoenix, if I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times. M Maya? Uh, for a second, you kind of sound like, <gasps> never give up. <laughs> but Chief, how I'm did not you... the Chief anymore. It looks like the shock of your defeat was enough to awaken Maya's powers. So, so you're being... Maya is channeling me. She hasn't given up, neither can you. Uh, but, but Chief, talk... Yes. later. Her powers are still weak, and I don't know how much time I have. Do you still have that receipt? Yeah, the one you wrote Maya on? I did Thanks, by the way. Never mind. <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. White. Case closed, Your Honor. Well, I see no reason to prolong this trial further. I pronounce the defense, uh, the defendant, Mr. Phoenix Wright, not guilty. Oh. This court is adjourned. Oh, wow. Thank you, Chief. You really bailed me out. Chief. He, uh, all right, come on. Edgeworth, wait. Uh, it's, it's been a while. Yes, it has. All right, come on. Oh, how could someone so little be so heavy? Anyway. Chief, oh, you're really gone. What am I going to do without you now? Mr. Wright? Ma, Maya, are you all right? Did, did we win? Yes, thanks to you and Mia. I guess you were lucky to have the face sisters on your side. Yeah, I was. Mr. Wright, you really risked a lot to help me out. No, it's it worked out in the end, and that's all that matters. Still, I'll never forget this. Thank you, Nick. It's nothing. I, uh, <clears throat> did you just call me Nick? It's a great name. Mia said that's what your friends call you. Well, Larry calls me that, but but Maya, that's not the point. So I was thinking, you're going to keep my sister's office, right? Um. Uh, yes, yes I am. So, would it be okay if I stay here for a while? You mean, here in the office? Well, you know, I could work here. Ah, oh, you're applying for a job. All right. <laughs> Do you have any prior experience working in a law firm? Nope. Did you perhaps study some of the techniques your sister used? Not a bit. Do you have any knowledge of law whatsoever? None whatsoever. Maya, what exactly can you do for me? Oh, lots of things. A water, Charlie, each time you forget. I'd clean the litter if you had a pet. I'll keep the couch warm whenever you're gone. Sometimes I may mow the lawn. What lawn? I promise you a rainbow's will gather dust. And that your TV trays never will rust. I don't need gratitude or a high pain. You're high. Feed me four meals every day. You're high. And
right, all right. Well, I'm convinced we can give it a shot. Be sure to give everything that you've got. Now I'll see you every weekday at night. So just right, right here on the line. And I'll be there and I'll watch your back. Don't despair, I'm behind you. If I need a tight one. Or I need a breath. I'll know just where to find you. Through thin and thin, we'll shine the light of defense and powerhouse pair. Okay, you win, you start tonight. I knew that you would make it right. For truth and justice, we will fight. And for you. will 
haunts my mind, burdening me with anxiety. Have I indeed been so blinded with pretentious piety? For if I cheat in the court, can I say with a straight face that I'm a better man than the sort who might prosecute every case? But no one should have to go through what I've been through. Ever. Which is why it is my role, my obligation, my responsibility to condemn. Frankly, some may doubt cases I have won. I will still live by my decree that I'll do what must be done to capture the wicked ones, for this is commanded of me. I have gone above and beyond in times. Justice requires the extra mile. I sense right thinks I am blind. If I bid into his mind, then I'd be the one who is on trial. Right, you fool, can't you understand? I'm not a monster, I'm just a man. Despite my objections and my commands, the crime shall pay is my only command. And while you search for contradictions, thinking I just want convictions, you can't comprehend just why I take
I'll see you next year, pal. Happy holidays. Here, put this in the middle spot there. All right. Ah, here's the paper. Thanks. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, forecast. Forecast. Chance of snow. Five percent. Should have known, I guess. Don't think I've ever seen it snow around here. No, it sure would be nice if it did, though. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas, but then again, aren't we all? Wouldn't it be nice if instead of rain and ice, a fluffy quilting snow started to fall? Christmas bells are ringing, carolers are singing, and here I am again, without a penny to my name. My tree's less than two feet, ramen's all I got to eat, and it seems like things will always be the same. Alone in my small tower, those Christmas bells ring sour, and yeah, they always play the same way. But I keep on smiling, long as those bells keep chiming, cause I believe that things could change on this beautiful Christmas Present for 
me? It's oh. just our way of saying thanks for saving us th uh, from those gangsters during the Steel Samurai case. Oh, yeah, of course, pal. Well, I really don't know what to say. I mean, what? No, 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 there's no time for this, pal. Look, something crazy's happened, I said. Look at this. Foul play at Lord Lake? Miles Edgeworth arrested? The young prosecutor, known for his tough stance on crime, was arrested this morning following suspicious circumstances surrounding an unidentified body at Gord Lake? What? No, wait, Nick, how could this happen? I, I guess I was right. Will it turn out all right? I can't believe how things have changed. On this solemnous Christmas day. Uh, guys, guys, he's not going to want me to defend him. No, no, you Listen here, pal. I'm not telling you. I'm asking you. I think we gotta switch to <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth might be a jerk, but you know what it's like to be all alone in here. I'm sure he just needs someone to listen to him. All right, guys, I'll talk to him, but don't hold your breath. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, pal. We'll barely regret this. I already do. <laughs> Where is he, anyway? Fixing his hair? <clears throat> oh, no, no. I mean, I'm sure he's just, uh... You wait here, pal. I'll go speak things up. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, Edgeworth, what are you doing here, right? Come to laugh at the fallen prosecutor in his lowest hour. Well, go on then. Laugh! I'm waiting. Drop the melodrama, Edgeworth. We don't have so much free time that we can come down here just to laugh at you. Yes, you do. <laughs> I wish you had to come. Go on, tell me. What is it you have to say? You first. What happened? What happened the other day? We heard about it in all the wrong places. Edgeworth, please tell us we won't let you face this alone. <laughs> alone? Edgeworth, let me defend you. Guilty of being a cowardly man. That is the luck of this prosecutor. I must have had some small flaw in my guard. Guess this is where I fall apart. I won't let that happen! Mr. Edgeworth, Nick wants to help you. I suppose I should be sorry to all those who oppose me. Every attorney, every last client was guilty thanks to me. Edgeworth, this is no time to be a bride. All along, you're at our set. You're at our done. I've only one. And you. Convince me. Go on right. Tell me of my innocence. Don't be so damn trite. You know I'm deep into this. There's more on the line. No honest way out. And there's no more time. For you to learn what law's about. But Edward, I've won every case. All three? What an ace. Like it or not, you're an amateur. You're going to lose sometime, and I'd rather it not be on my account. Mr. Edward, Nick won those trials because his clients were innocent. If you didn't do it, then what's the problem? Edward, you didn't do it. Right? My mind burning me with anxiety. Edgeworth, I'm asking if you did it! Crime deserves penance. I've done all I could. Why bother helping me? This serves the greater good. I won't believe it. 
Don't ask me to leave while you wallow in fear. Can't you believe? Don't stand alone, we're here. I can make this right. Just trust this hit life. Stand with us and fight. Let us see you from the blind. You still can There's nothing that's the truth alone. alone! Please, just leave it alone. All right? All right. Come on, Maya. Nick, wait! We need answers. We're not gonna get them here. Mr. Edwards changed so much. 
I have no idea, but later on that year, he transferred, and we never found out why. There you got son. What the heck are you two doing here? Mm -hmm. Didn't you hear they got a witness against Mr. Edgeworth? And she got a picture of the moment of the crime. A picture? How? Detective, oh, what did it you... It seems she was some kind of photographer. Had a picture camera set up to uh, take pictures whenever there was a loud noise. I had a leftover party popper and I set it off next to it and she must have chewed me out for a good ten minutes so I'm not wasting any gold darn film. I tell you, pal, it, it, anyway, anyway, what the point I'm trying to make here is Mr. Edgeworth needs your help, pals. He needs your best. While he's in there worrying about his future, you're out here trying to tell backstory? What kind of defense do you want? The kind with no client. No client, but uh, nobody else is dumb enough to defend him. You're all stuck, pal. Listen, listen. You gotta understand. Mr. Edgeworth isn't just an associate, pal. He's my friend, okay? You gotta help him. And I'm gonna help you help him. That way he can help me, uh, or I mean you can help, or we can, there's going to be helping happening now, right? <laughs> so anyway, here, here, I got this for you. It's an autopsy report, all right? I won't be needing it because I've got it memorized. Name of the victim, Robert Hammond. Time of death, 12 p.m., uh, uh, midnight, 12 a.m., hold on, I'm sorry, sorry. <clears throat> Cause of death, gunshot wound to the chest. Now you two go. <laughs> Investigate. <laughs> Learn. For Mr. Edgeworth! <laughs> Why don't you have as much energy as Detective Gumshoe? You know, I used to, until you came along. Hey! <laughs> hey, let me see that. The victim, Robert Hammond. I know that guy. How? Yeah, he used to work for Mr. Grossberg with my sister. Well, well maybe he'll know something. Yeah. All right. Mr. Grossberg, are you in there? Uh, uh, no, no. Uh, I, I, I'm far too busy. I'm going to have 30 prospective clients in my office right now, and there's simply not room for another. Uh, what did you say? Uh, you're breaking up. I'm going through a tunnel. Uh, Mr. Grossberg, <laughs> it's really urgent. I'm good to come in. Uh, yes, uh, no, buy, buy, not, no, no, sell. sell uh, buy on margin. Brilliant. We've done it again, Neville. Yeah, I shall have to call you back. Uh, yeah, goodbye. Oh, there you are. I was not expecting you. Mr. Grossberg, you're acting awfully strange. Do you know something about the murder that happened last night? Murder? John McDowell's man. So you don't really know? Oh, heavens no, boy. John McDowell's Last night, a man was shot with a pistol, and Edgeworth is the main suspect. The victim's name was Robert Hammond. Yeah, so that was a long time ago. He was one of my best associates. Robert Hammond, since you saw him last, about how many years would you say have passed? Did you say passed? No! <laughs> no! Maya, cover your ears.
Edgeworth. Right. I can't say I'm surprised to see you back. Edgeworth, what about your defense? Listen, I'm not doing this because I look down on you. I just don't want you anywhere near this case. <laughs> Is it because of the DL6 incident? What? Last night's victim was Robert Hammond the defense attorney for that case, and the prosecution's two chief witnesses were Misty Fay and Miles Edward, age nine. It's only been a few hours. You've already made that connection. You always were single-minded in your work, right? So, you'll talk to us? I can't see any reason to hide it from you now. DL6 was when my father died. He was shot in front of me. I don't remember much about it anymore. A defense mechanism, perhaps. That day I had gone with my father to the courthouse to observe one of his trials. As we were leaving, via the elevator, an earthquake struck, trapping us inside. I passed out from lack of oxygen. And when I awoke, my father was dead. A suspect was arrested. A court bailiff. It was pretty clear he was the only one who could have done it. The spirit medium said much the same thing. They say she channeled my father. But, in spite of that, Robert Hammond managed to win him a not guilty verdict. And now, Hammond is found dead at Gord Lake. Yes. Two days ago, I received a correspondence from him asking to meet me at the lake on Christmas Eve. I thought of... At the time, I thought he wanted to make amends. So close to the anniversary of the incident. Tying up loose ends, so to speak. Loose ends? The statute of limitations on DL6 runs out in three days. It's been 15 years since the incident. Nick, what does that mean? Oh, well, once the statute of limitations runs out, the case is closed forever. Right. It pains me to ask, but... I know. You want him to defend you, right? Yes. <laughs> Will you? Mr. Edgeworth, sir. Mr. Edgeworth. I... Oh, hi, Maggie. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, sir. Hey, uh, I, I got the paperwork here for your defense if uh, you and Mr. Wright are ready. You knew? Oh, uh, yeah, well, uh, I was hoping he'd come through for you, pal. Well, right. Of course, Edgeworth. I'll defend you. I can finally pay you back. All right, then, pal. Uh, Thank you, pals. Thank you. I gotta get this stuff down to the station. Uh, but you two go home and get some rest for the case tomorrow, all right? We'll see you tomorrow, detective. Good luck, pals. <laughs> for Mr. Edgeworth. <laughs> uh, Edgeworth, I'm, I'm fine, right? I'll see you tomorrow. Right. Tomorrow. on this case is someone named Von Karma. Right. You can still back out. Uh, why would I do that? Von Karma. He's a god among lawyers. He'll do anything to win. Anything. Sounds like someone else I know. He's the one who taught me to prosecute. He took me in when I had nowhere else to go. Great. Maybe he'll go easy on you. of every trial I'm always in full control the judge merely has to smile to say guilty is his only role I sustain my own objections to win the courtroom war none shall interfere with my perfect guilty score if justice then I will guide her to declare everyone guilty. I simply cannot err to maintain. 
maintain my perfect record. I will do what I must. No place in court for truth, peace, order, or trust. And perhaps some didn't do it. Innocent they may have been, but my cases are all perfect, and I'll do anything to win. I've not lost a trial in all my years. I bring these pitiful lawyers to tears. In prosecution, I have no peers. Manfred von Karma, perfection incarnate. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Silence! I was just taking a meal. Pause before speaking. Ah, oh, the very sorry. But you have an opening statement, Miss Bond. Decisive evidence? A decisive witness? What else is required? Well, there was, there was 
fingerprints found on the weapon. From, what? from the defendant, Mr. Edwards' right hand. What? 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 Oh. Order! I will have order in my court! The facts are clear. <laughs> in the chart, we found this bullet. This bullet came from this pistol. This pistol bears the fingerprints of the defendant. Oh my God. What? No. Oh. Oh. Order! Order! This is very precise of evidence. I'm but sure your honor would like to hear from my other witness. You may leave this man. <laughs> no, 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 but pay or I'll have your badge. I'll... Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> your prints were on the gun? I believe you've established that. Your prints were on the gun? I was in a day. Ah! Mr. Von Carver, please call your next witness. Yes, Your Honor. Will Miss Lotta Hart take the stand? <laughs> Doesn't she seem a little too excited for someone who just witnessed a murder? Miss Hart, you're a research student at a university, correct? Sure am. And you were at the lake that night photographing meteor showers for your research, is that also correct? Sure is. The prosecution submits as evidence these two photographs taken by the witness's camera at the lake. As you can see, there are two people in a boat, one of which is holding a gun. Court, accept these as evidence. Witness, you may begin your testimony. Y'all are crazy enough. You're so tense and serious. This ain't a funeral. It's kind of close, isn't it? It is a murder trial after all. Y'all need to learn some manners, too. Can't you like to speak like that to a young lady? Remember, don't say anything trivial or unrelated to the case. Understand? Y'all is it up now. Well, 
will not tolerate badgering of my witness. His Honor, please repeat your testimony. I sure can. The man on the boat was Edward. Maya. Nick, did we make it through the day? Uh, yes, thanks to you, but you got to be more careful. Next time, they would throw us both out. I know, but I had to do something, even if I'm not a lawyer and I can't channel sis. Still no luck? I haven't been training, but I'll be okay now that you've come to bail me out. <clears throat> I I'm sorry, but what? Nick, you weren't just going to leave me in here. Well, no, but I didn't really think about where I'd get the money. 
You know, we had that Steel Samurai case and got a lot of money from that, but that's months ago oh, and- Whoa, pals, what are you- Oh, hi, Maggie. <laughs> whoa, what are you two still doing here, pals? You need to get out there and investigate, you too! Uh, but, but wait, I haven't paid Maya's bail yet. Oh, you didn't hear. Oh, well, don't worry, pal, Mr. Edgeworth paid the whole thing. Really? Oh, yeah, of course, pal. You know, he was really touched by what you did in court today, helping him out. Oh, and uh, speaking of help, uh, I got a transcript of that crazy lady's testimony for you here. You mean Lana? Uh, yeah, whatever her name is. Um, you know, uh, she also got a picture of the, uh, another picture of the, the, the scene of the crime, but uh, I, I don't think it's very useful. I another mean, photo? Yeah, I mean, it's just a picture of a plain plague. I mean, look, you can even see the timestamps a good half hour beforehand. Weird. I wonder what triggered the camera. Search me, pal. Anyway, you two need to be careful in court tomorrow. I heard Mr. Von Karma talking, and he said he uh, wasn't going to tolerate any more uh, playground shenanigans uh, from that imbecilic moron. I think it was talking about you, pal. <laughs> anyway, you need to be careful. He's also got another witness for tomorrow. Who's the witness? No, I, I can't tell you that, pal. Look, I, I'm already violating all kinds of protocols here from the department, and uh, look, pay cuts are one thing, but I could lose my job. Listen, I, I gotta go talk to Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, you two don't give up hope and, and, and go out there and investigate some more. All right. And uh, Detective! For Mr. Edgeworth! De uh, detective, uh, tell, tell Edgeworth thanks for both of us. You got it, pal. For Mr. Edgeworth. <laughs> This is Lotta's testimony? <clears throat> I guess so. I heard two dang gunshots that night. That's it? Do you think Detective Gumshoe lost part of it? For once, I don't think so. Most of it was made up anyhow. You calling me a liar? What a... Uh, not much of a liar, per se, but... No, really. I understand. You know, I've been doing some thinking today. Being a witness, you can't just say whatever full thing comes to mind. So I decided to be more careful about what I say I saw. Good for you. That's right. From now on, I'm on the side of truth and justice. So to make it up to y'all, I overheard the talk cops talking about that trial tomorrow, and I've got some information I'm willing to share. Really? <laughs> well, that's mighty kind of you. Fur price. What? What? That's not fair. Hey, a gal's got to make a living. How much? Nick, you can't give in so easily. I don't have a lot, but I'll pay you whenever. Hey, who said anything about paying? No, sir. The only fair trade for information is information. I want you, Sadie Slicker, to wrangle me up a scoop in exchange for my hot tip. A scoop? On Gordy, of course. You show me a lake monster, I'll tell you where the cops have been all morning. But Gordy doesn't exist. Blasphemy. I won't believe it without solid proof. Cold, objective facts. All right. Well, if we find anything, we'll let you know. Oh, that's the spirit. Believe in your inner Gordy. We got a lot of... Well, I guess we should find some other leads. Uh, maybe that photo can tell us something. You mean we're not going to look for Gordy? Maya, we don't have time to waste on a stupid monster hunt, all right? This is for Mr. Edgeworth. Come on, Nick. Detective, I have nothing else to say to you. Why don't you do something more productive with your time? Maybe go try to find that lake monster everyone's talking about. <laughs> uh, oh, hey, pals. What are you still doing here? I take it Edgeworth isn't in much of a sharing mood? No. Everyone at the department thinks he did it. He's... He's given up. I can't believe what the chief and everybody else is saying, pal. It's like nobody's even thinking. Can you imagine as if as a detective I just went around making arrests without thinking? I mean, what if I just grabbed some <laughs> random innocent person and said, Case closed, pal. You and I got a date downtown. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I just wish there was some way that I could show everyone that Mr. Edgeworth wouldn't hurt a fly, you know? <sighs> okay, I've made up my mind, pal. Forget the cheat. Forget department protocols. Sometimes a man just has to take a stand. <clears throat> and I consider myself to be a real man's man, see? The 
kind of guy who won't back down from a fight. I keep this city clean, pal, and I live like a king, though I eat ramen noodles every night. But despite my gruff exterior, I know I ain't superior. My skills at solving crimes can sometimes rust. But I'm swallowing my pride. This time I'm on your side. And I'm the kind of guy that you can trust. Well, I know we butted heads before, starting with the case of Harry Butts. Yeah, that was Larry. And if the chief catches me helping you, he'll probably think I'm nuts. If he doesn't already. But see, pal, this is different from that red-white trial back in May. Because I'm sure Mr. Edgeworth is innocent, unlike the clients you had that day. Hey, that was me. Uh, Oh, yeah. Sorry again, pal. But if you need help, just call me and I'll be there in a flash. And just to show with house now, I'll lend you anything that ain't cash. Oh, well, thank you, kind detective. Von Karma will eat our dust. We'll find the lies. Now I'm the kind of guy that you can trust. And I'm being serious with you too now, pal. I mean, if there's anything that I can do to help get Mr. Edgeworth declared not guilty, well, let's just say we're a team now, pal. Well, considering you usually make things worse for my clients, but... It's like the gumshoe's putting his job on the line for us. The least you can do is take advantage of it. Yeah, that's right, pal. So, detective, any chance you can help us find Gordy somehow? Oh, 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 you bet. I got three secret weapons I can lend you. So listen up and take your pet. First up, shake hands with our department's best evidence-seeking tool. This bitch is so advanced, it makes me look like a bubbly fool. Imagine that. I found him in the gutter on a sad, cold winter's night. He's my pal, though he gives a hand that beats him quite a bite. He bites. You can call him Missile, he'll find any drugs or food you need. What? He should come in handy if the Gord Lake monster's been smoking weed. Hey! No need for sarcasm. This will help with many a bust. And if you feed him, then he's the kind of guy that you can trust. The second is this fishing pole and my fondest memory of a fishing trip I got to take with Maggie a cute trainee. Hold it. We can't catch Morty with that. And we can't sit around and just wait. Try. You just need the right kind of bait. Like missile? What? Yeah, you make me lose one of the rest, pal. Oh, sorry, gosh. I'll save the best for last. This metal detector's real intense. Last month, this baby even found me 25 whole cents. Wait, wait, we're looking for a monster, not changed from someone's pants. Well, you never know, pal. It may have been eating. Soda cans. So that's what I can lend you, my loyal lawyer chums. Well, they're all so perfect. Yeah, I can't pick just one. Now go help Mr. Edgeworth. To free him is a must. And I'm the kind of guy you can trust. Cha! just tell us where the cops have been all morning. Oh yeah, sure. Why didn't you say so, pal? <laughs> They're uh, down by the Gord Lake uh, interviewing that guy that runs the boat shop. You know, uh, what's his name? Well, well anyway, not important. Why don't you do head down there? They should be done by now. And, uh, you know, take the secret weapons with you. Oh, uh, well, I don't think we're going to need the uh, <clears throat> dog or the fishing pole. But the metal detector, that could come in handy. All right then, pal. Excellent. You two get out there and investigate and, and, and interview and, uh, what, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, for Mr. Redgeworth! <laughs> you need more iron in your diet. Maya, I can't think of a single instance in which using a metal detector on a person is going to help us. Ever. <laughs> Pretty high tech. Hello, 
so proud. Pasta shop? The rat noodle! Rat noodle! Rat noodle! Whoa! I guess Maya made a new friend. I right, there's Polly. I can always ask her if I've ever forgotten something important, right, Polly? Right, right. Polly, Polly, Polly. Uh, sir, Polly. please. Uh, we don't have time for this. We're in the middle of an investigation right now. Could you tell us something? Uh, look, take that! Teach, <laughs> I agree to help you on one condition. When all this case is over and done, you agree to take over the wet noodle. Oh, we can't promise that. No, no, no. Of course we'll run the pasta shop for you. Just Now, about those questions that I had, uh, the, sir, that was my thought. That's great news. The way we can really get things moving, I, I even wrote a jingle for commercials. Okay. A jingle? Right. No, not again. <laughs> Sneaking up on you like I just did. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go stand guard, pal. Uh, thanks, detective. We really appreciate this. Yeah, no best. problem, pal. Oh. Good luck to you. Wait, before you go, your metal detector. We oh. we didn't really find anything. Oh, well, uh, it was worth a shot, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. All right. Don't worry, Let's pal. No time will come. <laughs> Let's see, I don't know if it's in here. Hmm. Ah, here, got it. <clears throat> DL6, December 28, 2001, the district court. An earthquake struck and the power went out, and three people were trapped inside an elevator. It took five hours to get them out, and it looks like they passed out due to lack of oxygen. Hmm. When they were found, one of them was dead. But that's weird. It says that there was only one gunshot, but the murder. There was only one bullet found in the heart, but the murder weapon was fired twice. Weird. They never sent found the second bullet. That, that just sounds terrible. I can't believe Mr. Edwards saw his own dad die. All right. So if Edward and his dad were two of the people in the elevator, then then the third one was the court bailiff, the man that uh, that uh, that Hammond defended. All right. Let's see. Gregory Edgeworth, Miles Edgeworth. There, a court bailiff, Yanni Yogi. But that's weird. It said he was found not guilty. So Mr. Grossberg was right, but if they were the only three in the elevator, he had to have done it. It couldn't have been Mr. Edgeworth. He was just a kid. The victim was his dad. Yeah, but it says here that looks like Robert Hammond argued that Yogi had uh, suffered temporary insanity due to brain damage. And there was no other evidence, so the witness couldn't be indicted, and the case was dropped. After that, Yogi just vanished. Well, where could he be? I don't know, but I think we'll get closer to solving the truth of this matter once we find that out. Let's go.
for State versus Edward. The defense is ready, Your Honor. And the prosecution will end this case in three minutes. What? My God. Three minutes. No time to waste. Witness, approach the stand. Colossal waste of time. 
Mr. Box, please begin your testimony. Huh. You got it, Box! Well, I was hanging out with my girlfriend Ruth in my mansion with the golden picket fence. Excuse me. Sir, must I remind you now to please tell the truth because perjury is a criminal offense. Oh, uh, sorry. Let me try that again. See, I was all alone because I've just been dumped. And I know that isn't easy to believe. I hit the lake so I could look for some junk, which had also left me on that Christmas Eve. But as I brought that boat back into the shop, I heard a gun fire with a noisy pop. <laughs> Don't think my opinion counts for a whole lot more than guarantee you that I heard that shot. That's how it all happened, I recall the clearest day, so believe it even if you think I'm nuts. His testimony's vague. You notice what they say, something special. It's usually the nuts. Your Honor, this witness offers nothing new. I, I demand you be dismissed, and ideally drawn in court. Hold it! Uh, Larry, I just realized that something's out of place in your testimony. And what's that? Well, yesterday, Miss Lotta Hart testified, and I quote, Y'all listen up good now. I heard two dang gunshots that night. Wait, 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 wait. You said miss, not miss. Larry, 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 please stay focused. Please explain. Why didn't you hear the second gunshot? The truth is that I was listening on my headphones because radio's a friend that's always there. I like to jam out when I'm feeling alone, and so I may have missed a shot that filled the air. But I remember that one thing that I heard. The DJ was talking when it occurred. So I know it wasn't something like a killer drumming riff. But let me guarantee you that I was scarce. Then. When the DJ had talked, there was hardly any noise. So I listened in awe at your really sexy voice. It was pure and demure, it's mature and so refined. I got to get that lovely voice out of my mind. That's how it all happened. I recall it plain as ink. And to get up here, it took a lot of guts. Ha! This guy should see a shrink because his testimony stinks. And when something smells, it's probably the butt. Can't stand to listen to this lad. This young man has nothing to do. Larry, there's just one thing I should know. When you listen to the room. In regards to the DJ, what exactly did she say on that show? Do you know? I, I remember. She said, hey, it's almost Christmas. Well, Mr. Rock, anything to add? Well, as convincing as an argument you may have, I demand we end this pointless charade. Oh, hold it! Your Honor, I just realized how Larry's testimony changes everything. If you recall, Miss Lada's camera went off at 12.15 December 25th. Yes, yes. And though the witness is incompetent and frankly quite a dope, hey. the testimony's not a myth. Hey, come on, and buddy. though we all assumed the gun fired twice, in fact, the murder weapon fired thrice. One was fired Christmas Eve, the other's Christmas Day. These three photos illustrate my repartee. See? One at 11.50 p.m. Almost Christmas. And then two more at 12.15. There were three snapshots for three gunshots, and Larry's testimony proves it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. No objections, Mr. Von Carmel? The only question is, what happened during this 25-minute gap? Indeed, we must look into this matter further. Mr. Butts, your final thoughts. Final thoughts. Well, Get well, it was quite a tricky shot in the case. It's impressive how your man can survive. Every word is a sermon, it's a part of that sin, or as words of justice, boys, it's just for life. Oh, that's how it all happened, and that's all I got to say. I'll recall it just like it was yesterday. It was Tuesday, and so I saved the day. Even though I'm just a glut! When, when something smells, it's gotta, gotta be. This man needs a lobotomy. When something smells, it's gotta be the butts! That's right! It's gotta be the butts! Acha! Get that man out of here! testimony cannot be denied. 25 minutes between the first gunshot heard by Larry and the murder witnessed by Miss Lotta Hart. More than enough time for the real killer to dispose of the body and save the crime scene. So you've invented a real killer? 
How utterly desperate. I know who that real killer is. The only other person who witnessed the crime. The boat shop caretaker. He lured Hammond into the shop, shot him, and then disposed of the body. Then he called Edgeworth, who had received a letter from Robert Hammond and would not be able to identify an imposter. He then fired twice to create a witness and then jumped into the water and swam back to the boat shop, framing Miles Edgeworth for his crime. What a ludicrous story. But you can't rule out the possibility, can you? Not without questioning the caretaker. Prosecutor Von Kahn, I would like a word with your witness. <laughs> of course, Your Honor. Detective. <coughs> <laughs> While we're waiting, I have some questions for the defendant, Mr. Edgeworth. You heard the testimony just now. How could I have possibly missed it, Your Honor? <laughs> <laughs> what Wright proposes is logical. It's true. Two days ago, I received a correspondence from Robert Hammond saying he wanted to meet me on the lake. Uh, he said he wanted to, to discuss... Sir, it's a detective, we're conducting a trial. I know, sir. I'm sorry, but the, the witness, the boat shop guy, he, he's gone. What? I, I mean, I even got my boys all looking for him. They radioed down to the boat shop. He's not even there, sir. Mr. Von Karma. A warrant has already been issued. Good. <laughs> well, then. Oh. Well, it goes without saying that I cannot declare a verdict under these circumstances. I request that the police department utilize all its forces to find that witness. I want to know who he is. Am I understood? Yes, sir. Very well. <laughs> Court is adjourned. All right, Nick, another day. Yeah, we just barely got out under that guilty verdict. That was really close. Yeah. Yeah, thanks to my awesome performance. Ah, oh, come on, Nick. They were smoothing in the aisles, weren't they? Well, I do remember feeling faint. No, come on, you can do better than that. I saved both your butts in there today. <laughs> no pun intended. Am I right, Edgy? It was like love at first sight, wasn't it? What? Edward, did you say something? Oh, come on, Edgy, relax. All that stress is going to give you more gray hair. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm afraid it's not over for me yet. What do you mean? We had a close call, sure, but, but now that we finally... Right. There's something that's been troubling me for a very long time now. And I don't know whether I should tell you. Oh, come on. You can trust us. Oh, there's so little time left. I, I want to get it off my chest. Uh, Edgeworth, what is this about? It's a nightmare that I've had. A memory of a crime I committed. A memory of a murder. For years, I've dreamed of my father's murder. I thought I had no memory of it, but the dream is remarkably consistent. My father and the bailiff fight. I grab the bailiff's gun. And then a gunshot. And a terrible scream. Edgeworth, you don't mean you think that- There were only three people on that elevator, right? <clears throat> Miles Edgeworth. You were required for questioning. Hey, sir, this is a lawyer. Nick, I, I had a right to know what kind of question to get out The police are interested in the so called letter you received from the victim. Please, come with me. Yes, sir. Mr. Edgeworth. Nick, you don't really think No, that. there's no way. Edgeworth would never take someone's life, not even by accident. Come on, we've still got a lot of work to do.
Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Fiance. Fiance again? That's it. That case has to be related. This is your last chance. Now is the time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life, Robert Hammond and Miles Edgeworth. It even has a list of instructions for him to follow. First, get on the lake, fire two gunshots. What? That's exactly what you said in court earlier. Uh, well, who was he addressing this letter to? We need to figure it out. I need more information on DL6, but Mr. Edgeworth isn't holding right now. No, I know who we can talk to. Uh, just come on, come on. Oh, Polly, we'll come back and check on you. I won't forget. Don't forget DL6. Edgeworth is innocent, and 
and I'm going to prove it. I truly hope you can. Uh, it's how being a black man he killed uh, he killed Bob Hammond. That's for sure. But as far as the father, I, I don't know what I think anymore of the boy. But I will tell you one thing: it's all according to Manfred von Kama's plan, and he's unbeatable. No, there has to be some way. Mr. Grossberg, can you help us? Oh, With all three of us, I'm oh, sure that. Oh, I, I, No. This case has caused me enough trouble. I want nothing more to do with it. But Mr. Grossberg, you just- Get out! How could you abandon Edgeworth in his time of need? Get out! All right. Come on, Maya. We don't need help from a cowardly old man. You're right. You're a better man than I. But if I were you, I might look at that little evidence locker on the DL6 case. That is, if you're ready to see what you might find, it's a bit of a stretch, but you might find something. Thank you, Mr. Grossberg. I promise you, I'll get to the truth of this matter once and for all. I'm sorry about what I said. You've no time for formalities. Go solve that case. Thank you. Godspeed, Ryan. Time, 
waiting to exact my revenge on the one man who ruined my perfect trial record. And tomorrow, my dreams will be realized. Miles Edgeworth will pay the price. All of my rage that's been building over these years, tenfold.
tomorrow at last. Justice will prevail. Together we're strong, and I know we won't fail. I feel it at my door, the truth I've so long denied. I fear the nightmares here, time to let it inside. Tomorrow at last, at last. The biggest trial we see in years and everything's reversed. For who's in the defendant's chair but the man defendant's curse? Rookie versus head of red, a demon being tried. And the only man who's beaten him is standing at his side. We call the prosecution, convict the prosecutor. Was Mr. Edgeworth just a witness or was he the shooter? It's all up to you. It's the third day of the end of this fight. Who will win? I will win. All right. It's taken 15 years, but it was worth a day. It will be fair. I know I must stand alone to face my the fate. final torch. Take Mr. Von Karma up on his proposal. What? What proposal? 
We would like to cross-examine the witness's parent. You can't do that! This is what? 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 This is what are you gonna do? Doff my pay? Absolutely! Order, I say! Order! Um, what do you think, Mr. Bonfire? Do you even need to ask? This is a complete force! I object! Objection! You're the one that suggested that we could cross-examine the witness's parent, and as an attorney, I have a right to take you up on that offer. <clears throat> uh, it, it, right? If you really are that foolhardy. But I want to point that in my witness. Let the parrot take the stand. Fine. You to wake me up when this catastrophe is over. Indeed. Bailiff, bring in the bird. Wait, me? Yes. this. <laughs>
Well, Judge, we're waiting. Get on with your verdict. Then Miles Edgeworth is... Innocent in this case, yes. Get on with it, man. Very well. The court finds the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, not guilty. That is all. Court is adjourned. Objection! Your Honor, I object to your judgment. I am not innocent at all. What are you doing? As we have just heard, Robert Hammond was killed by Yanni Yogi to frame me for revenge. But revenge for what? Objection! Your Honor, the verdict has already been passed. I object to Objection! Your Honor, did something like this happen yesterday? And the witness came forth with information after a verdict had been reached. Miles Edgeworth must be heard. Indeed, it is our duty to hear every witness. Mr. Edgeworth, go ahead. Mr. Wright won't stop you. Yes, Your Honor. Yanni Yogi wanted revenge on the two men who ruined his life. Robert Hammond, who convinced him to plead insanity. And as I have just now realized, on me. I didn't want to believe it, but if Yanni Yogi was not the killer of DL6, it all becomes perfectly clear. The real criminal, the real murderer of DL6, it was me! Oh, them have seen before a man's been declared not guilty. Turn around and ask for more, confessing to a different guilty man to his crime. I told you he was the lie! He won't go free this time. Your Honor, I must confess my guilt. The trial of DL6 is a murder of Gregory Edgeworth. The statue of the Gotcha. 
shot. However, the police report showed that the murder weapon was fired twice. Furthermore, in this photo, you can see two bullet holes. One in the heart of Gregory Edgeworth, and another in the elevator door. Now I ask you, where did this second bullet hole come from? Shoot the victim at the door. Two guns recorded, no less and no more.
those elevator door doors open, and you saw the man who ruined your perfect trial record relying right next to a pistol, I must wonder, Prosecutor Von Karma, what did you do? Mr. Von Karma, are these claims true? Even if you could put me in court, then there's no proof that he has me anywhere near that elevator or the gun. As you recall, the DL6 file went missing, didn't it, cockroach? I have a single piece of evidence. The bullet taken from Gregory Edgeworth's heart. Hey, what do you propose you could do with that? It's for a simple one, Connor. If the ballistic markings on the bullet found inside of you match the ones found in the bullet extracted from my father's heart, that places you with the gun at the crime scene. You should know that. You just think I'm going to play along with this charade. You think I would just trust any doctor to cut open my arm to take out a You can trust me, pal! <laughs>
Just like old times, wasn't it, Edgy? I, oh. I mean, who knows where any of this would be without you, pal? Let's all hear it for Phoenix Wright! Woohoo! Yeah! The bullet was in his shoulder the whole time! Incredible. If anyone could have done it, it would be Nick. I know. I was there. See, pal, I knew Mr. Wright would get you off the hook. Detective. This is the best day ever. Detective, please. Finally, the case is won. But soon there'll be another one. My search for truth has just begun. And yes, I know. And yes, I know. You know, you never did get me that scoop on Gordy. Well, you know, we were pretty busy, but sorry. Oh, that's okay. You go ahead and give me that scoop now, and we'll call it even. Um, well, I guess. Yeah, no, excuse me? Yeah, who's paying for this? Uh, I gotta take care of this now, sorry. <laughs> There'll be dangers, there'll be crime, but I'm not afraid this time. I'll face the world and I'll do fine, because I know, because I know. Well, right. I, I, I don't know how to say this, but. I, I wouldn't be standing here if not for your foolhardy defense, and so, well, thank you. Edgeworth, what are friends for? <clears throat> Look, like it or not, you've got friends now. I know it may seem weird, but trust me, you'll get used to it. And it wouldn't kill you to smile any once in a while, you know? <laughs> Wait, you're leaving? Well, I've thought about it a lot. It's hard being a spirit medium that can't talk to spirits. Anyway, you'll be fine without me. I mean, it's not like I did anything useful. Maya, I could have never done this without you. H how many times did you catch things that I missed? And in Von Karma, he almost got away with everything. He would have gotten away with everything. If not for that one bullet, that's the piece of evidence that you gave me, Maya. So I won't let you say you're useless. You understand? Maya fades the one who helped me through this battle. This victory is shared between us, it's true. And as long as you're there, you'll assuage my despair and help me through. Nick. You and me together fighting the good fight. Can't you see that you don't to leave? Just say that you'll stay and we'll face the new day. All you have to do is believe. And you know what else? Your sister was there. But I didn't... I, I, I know. It sounds crazy, but she was there guiding me the entire time. I think it goes to show you that the ones we truly care about never really leave us, do they? I'll be back soon. You better be. I promise. I want to be able to stand on my own. I'm going to become a full-fledged spirit medium. And then I'll come back, and we'll get back to work. And in the meantime... You'll be there even when you're gone. Never fear. You'll be in my heart. I, I won't forget you. You'll be too strong. Even though we are far apart, through thick and thin, we'll shine the light. We'll fight for what's right, that I swear. I hope you know I'm glad we met. I'll carry on with no regret. Just promise me you won't forget that for you. Yeah, who's paying for all this? Mm -hmm. Not it. Not, not it. What? Uh, that's not fair. Wait, wait a second. That doesn't even make any not sense. Not it is infallible, right? Show me your <laughs> After everything I've done for you? And anything? What? Ah! Remember there's a cross to We'll be there on the trail. We'll keep on searching for the truth. And
and I don't intend to fail. There's no place I will not go. There's nothing I will do. I'll be we'll with stick you. together side by side, and we'll see it through. And when the witness is really lying to throw me off my case, we'll find a contradiction.